So I finally purchased that Petri. It's finally available, not in early access, and I got it on my main account. And I still think it's really, really good. I obviously had some pretty amazing matches back when it was early access on my CC account. But now that I actually have it, how has it been? It's been okay. I think this is a great tier 11 battleship. I think that if you're looking for a good meta battleship right now, Petri is pretty awesome. It's really, really, really good at long range. And of course, that's what we need in this meta. You're gonna see most of the salvos this game be outside of 20 kilometers, and we're still gonna have an absolutely monster game. So if you're looking for that kind of consistency, I think you should probably give this ship a shot. It is very expensive though. It takes a lot of credits to run, and it's not cheap to kit out up front either. So keep that in mind. And sometimes it doesn't feel like the biggest upgrade over the Republic. And that's gotta be the biggest criticism of the Petri, where we get the Satsuma and the Hanover that do feel like a tier, tier and a half better than the equivalent tier 10 ship. Whereas the Petri is like almost one tier better. I think the biggest issue is the accuracy, straight up. I think that the 1.8 Sigma on the Petri versus 2.0 Sigma on the Republic is the biggest downside. If you didn't know, Sigma is the tendency of the shells to go towards the middle of the dispersion ellipse. It's just a number that Wargaming uses to calculate things and they called it Sigma. So a bigger number is better. The more likely something is to go to the middle of that dispersion ellipse. So 1.8 is not great. That's actually around the same Sigma that German battleships get. And obviously those aren't very well known for their good dispersion. There's a lot that goes into dispersion though, more than just Sigma, but Republic having 2.0 versus 1.8 is pretty significant, considering most battleships at tier 10, for example, are gonna be within 1.7 Sigma to 2.1 Sigma. So it's not a very big range here. So a pretty massive difference at this tier. And even though we do have more guns, it's really nice to have 12 guns instead of eight. The reload's longer, 30 second reload base where Republic is what, 24? I forget what the base is. It gets down to around 21 when you fully kit it out. So a much faster reload. And that's something that really is amazing about the Republic if you haven't played it yet. It's so fun to have a near 20 second reload. You know that any ship that's caught bow into you cannot turn out. They just can't complete a safe turn without showing broadside while you're loaded. A lot of these 30 second reload battleships can barely not punish a ship for turning out in front of it if the ship times it right. Whereas Republic just got you covered. It's not gonna let you turn out for free. And of course with Republic, a little better accuracy, maybe is a little bit more consistent. So it's volume of fire versus faster reload and better accuracy when it comes to the Petri versus the Republic. I still really like the Petri. It's not like I'm hating on this ship at all, but I do think it's a consideration that this doesn't feel like as big of a buff or a tier higher than the Satsuma especially. That ship is just amazing. It's as accurate or at more accurate than Yamato including that insane accuracy buff every four salvos. It's just amazing. So keep that in mind that this isn't going to be quite that dramatic, but it overall is still a really fun ship to play. It's quite fast. It feels pretty tanky overall compared to the Republic. This ship is gigantic and only covered in 32 millimeters of armor, but what you do get is an insane turtle bag and a really amazing ability to just sit broadside and not take damage. It's really, really weird that this ship takes next to no AP damage when it's flat broadside. So against a lot of those other super ships that do overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, it's almost better to sit broadside. Now you can get citadeled at random weird angles and that, but the broadside belt armor is extremely strong here. So it's not like we're at a massive disadvantage when it comes to armor, but it is something to consider. We don't have 32 mil overmatch ourselves, and we're fighting against a lot of ships that do have 32 millimeters of overmatch. Overall though, I think that the Patri is the easiest of the tier 11 super battleships to use, mainly down to its shell velocity. I think you've noticed throughout this video that 
Like I said, we're shooting at max range a lot of the time here. And I'm able to consistently land shells in the vicinity or actually manage to hit things pretty hard at these insanely long ranges. This is a very difficult shot to make with most tier 10 battleships. And I think that the Satsuma having a little bit slower shell velocity makes it a little harder to hit things at these ranges. And that's just on top of the Hanover not even having the range to get out to this distance. This is how a lot of these super ship games are gonna go. And I've been seeing a lot more super ships in battles. You can let me know in the comments down below, but it's no longer one or two per team. I've seen where half the teams are made up of super ships already. And that's just going to continue to increase as more people get to super ships. And that I think is going to be a bad thing unless something is eventually done about it in map design and in game design. Here, by the way, if you're wondering, yes, we're finally actually gonna do damage to the <laughs> FDR after shooting at it for so long. Um, certainly a bit of a random roll of the dice type of ship. I've been aiming pretty well. Sometimes you get a full salvo dev strike on an FDR. Other times, yeah, it's just gonna land all around them. So there's your uh, thumbnail shot if you clicked on it for that reason. Uh, it felt really good in the moment, I gotta say, but I haven't had only matches like this. There's been times where you just don't get those dev strikes and it feels pretty bad to play this thing. I think back to what I was talking about when it comes to so many super ships in matches, I think most of these maps are designed around tier eight ships. I really don't think they've been designed for tier 10 and certainly not super ships. Notice how all the islands are just concentrated in the D, E, F lines. There's really not many islands outside of that. And because of that, and how much range and accuracy there is at tier 10 and at tier super ships, you're just not using these islands, especially in CV games, super CVs having insanely fast planes to spot things early. All of this damage stacks and all the early spotting means people can't get to these islands to use them as cover because they're gonna get spotted and they're gonna get crossfired before that by all these long range battleships and cruisers. So I think that most of these blowouts and passive boring games are a result of extremely long range accurate ships, extremely fast and early spotting, and these islands just not being far enough away. They're not allowing anyone to get close enough to use them to push up. So I think that as we get more super ships in the game and more people get them and more matchmaker is filled by just super ships, we're gonna need a huge overhaul to map design. I really do think things need to spread out because there's just, it's just too passive and it's just too boring. I really do think that. And there are times where I get frustrated with the game and I quit playing and I'm just not in a great mood because I just didn't have a great session. But sometimes I stop playing just because I'm getting bored of the constant long range sniping over islands and RNG working, RNG not working in this case, for example. But I do think that map design needs to change now that we have these insanely powerful long range ships. So let me know what you think about that specifically in the comments down below. This is something I've trying to been thinking about and trying to work out in my head why we're seeing so passive games and why we're seeing so many more blowouts. And I do think it's down to that fast spotting, insanely accurate long range damage, and poor map design that's not designed for these new ships. So hopefully we can get some new maps in the future that are designed around these ships. Maybe we can move tier 10 and super ships up out of the current map pool if we get some new high tier maps that are designed for these ships. I'm not sure what the solution is, but I do think that it's a big problem. And one of the reasons that the Patri is good but can be a little bit boring to play if you're constantly sniping at longer ranges. This feels like a close range salvo into this incomparable and it's still at 15 kilometers. 15 kilometers is super long range at tier seven, right? Tier eight even, that's pretty long range for a lot of ships. NC, you're still leading at what? Eight seconds, nine second lead time there in an NC. These lower tier ships are very well designed for these maps, allowing people to push up, making for interesting gameplay. Here, I just don't think it is. And I think one final downside, just so you're not thinking that the Petri is this perfect, amazing meta battleship, 
where it, it is very strong, admittedly, at long range. That shell velocity is so nice at range. It's been quite nice to hit things at longer distances, making it much easier to play in some of these more boring games. This is where it struggles. You don't have 32 millimeters of overmatch. That's a huge problem when you're fighting other battleships. Hanover, Satsuma, Yamato class, they're all able to overmatch 32 millimeters. And if you don't have that, and you're covered in 32 millimeters of armor, it's gonna be very difficult to rack up any damage. That's why I included this clip specifically in this video. I wanted to show you how difficult it can be if battleships are just bow on to you and pushing into you. It's really tough to do anything with AP. And you think, well, let's just swap to the HE. Republic has good HE, Petri probably does as well. And it does, but it doesn't have the reload of the Republic to constantly be lighting those fires and being that massive HE threat. It's not quite as good. And worse accuracy means less shells on target as well. So it's all right with the HE, but it's not even close to something like the Satsuma or even the Hanover, where it, they can just use overmatch and do really well in these close range battleship engagements. So I'm forced to run away here. This game overall was a pretty rough one, I would say. We are going to get a really, really good damage number result at the end of this game. I don't really want to show it all, though, because it took forever for me to rack up any damage in this game. And that was really the problem. The number of hits that it took to do any damage in this game, I think, was one of the main reasons that this game didn't go so well for me. Battleships are often all about AP alpha damage. They're not as much about DPM or hitting a lot of shells on target. They're about finding that right opportunity to get that maximum dev strike salvo in. And this match, the RNG just said no. We dev struck that FDR in the previous game, and in this one it just said no. That Annapolis took many salvos to even do any damage to, and throughout the match I just didn't have a great experience. So I'm not going to show it all, but I did want to show you just how little damage I'm able to do to these battleships as they're pushing me bow in. It didn't feel like a super ship versus a tier 10. It felt like a pretty balanced tier 10 versus tier 10 engagement here. Keep in mind, I have an Annapolis and a Zorky backing me up here against the Ohio. I think they're probably doing most of the damage as he's burning out. So not the strongest ship in the battleship versus battleship engagements, but the shell velocity really is amazing. The extra guns can lead to some consistency at longer ranges. Although the downside being not enough overmatch, the armor being only 32 millimeters is rough against other super ships. And I think that just the accuracy decrease over the Republic is kind of sad to see. So we even got up to nearly 300K in this game. But the reason I'm not showing it to you is 150 shell hits. <laughs> That's just too many. It took forever. We lost, but this scoreboard doesn't really look like a loss, doesn't it? It's kind of funny, uh, the teams being so evenly on base XP and yet we lost this one. As for the commander build, I have gone with a pretty standard battleship build. Nothing fancy here. We can't really even go for secondaries if you've been wondering if you can. They're only 100 millimeters. This is another bit of a downside. A small one, but Republic and Borgon get 127 millimeter secondaries, which are enough to pen superstructures, whereas 100 millimeters can't even pen superstructures, so they're not the most useful. Even though the reload time is nuts and the DPM is theoretically insane, they're just not getting full pens basically ever. So not really worth specking, especially given the passive meta. So I try to focus a little bit more on main guns and that long range capability, right? So reload, we're concealment, so we can maybe get some surprise salvos and main gun accuracy. So while I've had some pretty amazing games with the Patri, it hasn't been all super positive. And there's certainly some major downsides to this ship. So consider that before spending like 50, 60, 70 million on getting the ship out, but it is fun. And I think the real strength of this ship is its flanking ability and 12 Republic guns. Assuming they hit, it's really, really fun to play. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.